my kindergarten teacher at Eagle Ridge Academy. And today I'd like to talk to you about why I feel like pre-K is an important part of a child's life, especially the Georgia pre-K in our public schools. I've been a teacher for 25 years. And when I started, I was a kindergarten teacher. After four years, our school opened a pre-K class and I was so excited to try to get those babies ready for kindergarten. It was my goal to make a difference in their lives so that they would walk into kindergarten with the skills that they needed. Pre-K teachers in Muskogee County are, are so well-trained. I had so much training and wonderful opportunities to learn what developmentally appropriate teaching meant for a four-year-old, how to get them excited about learning, how to teach them to think through problems and just do a lot of fun things that uh, by the time they get to kindergarten, we just don't get to do as much, even though it's a passion of mine. They take a child where they are and they just move them forward and grow them. If it is someone who already has the skills of letters and sounds, then those teachers go ahead and take the opportunity to go ahead and teach them more about reading and writing. If a child is struggling with those letters and sounds and they plan activities and fun things for that child to do to practice those things so that they can hopefully learn them by the end of kindergarten, by the end of pre-K to be ready for kindergarten. Um, the pressure just isn't there. So the pre-K teachers strive to grow them and to get them ready, but they're not going to push them in an uncomfortable way. Probably one of the greatest things I see in our own classes at Eagle Ridge Academy is the love that those teachers and the peer professionals have for those children. They care for them and nurture them and they truly treat them like they were one of their own. More than anything, I just hope that you take advantage of this wonderful opportunity, this program that strives to grow children in the safest, most loving, caring way possible. It is a, I guess, a, it is a diamond that you need to grab. Okay. And I thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in one of our Georgia Pre-K classrooms next year. Thank you. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Make a reader every day. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Mrs. Deborah Clark from the Mildred L. Terry Public Library. And welcome to our Merge of Storytime. You heard me singing as I was coming on. I was singing about the five skills for early literacy. And they are talk, sing, read, write, and play. Parents, as you know, learning to read starts at birth with everyday interactions that occur when you talk, sing, read, write, or play with your child. Yes, it does. So let's say these skills again. Talk, sing, read, write, and play. Boys and girls, before we begin our story time, I would like to sing hello to you. And I would like for you to sing it back to me. We have been singing this song. We have been doing virtual story times since last year in April. It's been almost a year. Hoping we'll see you real, real soon back inside the library. But until we do, now it's time to say hello. Say hello. Say hello. Now it's time to say hello and start our story time. Well, today, boys and girls, we have what's called a big read. Yes, a big read. Today, we're reading a story. It's entitled The Fisherman and His Wife, and it's written by Rachel Isadora. Boys and girls, this story teaches a very good lesson. It teaches you how to be happy with what you have and not to be greedy, not to want more. I think you're going to enjoy this big read. Are you ready? Let's get started. The Fisherman and His Wife, retold and illustrated by Rachel Isadora.
Long ago, there was a fisherman who lived with his wife and a pig side by the sea. One day, the fisherman caught an unusually large flounder. Please, spare my life. I'm not a fish, but an enchanted prince, the flounder begged. Surprised that the fish, the fish could speak, the fisherman let him go. When the fisherman arrived home, his wife asked for the fish that she would cook for dinner. The fisherman told her about the flounder. Did you not wish for anything before you let him go, she asked. What would I possibly wish for, the fisherman said. We live in a place that is small and stinks. Go tell the enchanted flounder, I want a hut, the wife insisted. The sea was stirring when the fisherman returned. Flounder, my wife has a wish, he called out. What is it, the flounder asked as he swam near the shore. A hut, the fisherman answered. Go then, she has it already, the flounder said. Hmm. When the fisherman arrived home, his wife said, Husband, isn't this much better? Yes, the fisherman answered. Now we will be happy. And they were for a few days until the wife said, This hut is still too small. Go, husband, and tell the flounder I want a stone castle. The fisherman knew this was not right, but he did not want to argue, so he went. The sea was green and murky when the fisherman called to the flounder that his wife had another wish. What does she want now? The flounder asked. Alas, she wants a stone castle, the fisherman called. Go then, she has it already, the flounder said. When the fisherman arrived home, his wife asked, Is this not beautiful? Yes, the fisherman said. Now let us be content. The following morning, the wife decided, We should be king of all the land. But I don't want to be king, the fisherman said. Then I will be. Go tell the flounder, I must be king, the wife said. So the fisherman left with a heavy heart. The sea was dark and frothy when the fisherman called to the flounder that his wife had another wish. What does she want now? The flounder asked. To be king, the fisherman said, frightened. Go home, she is king, the flounder said. The fisherman went home and said, now wife, there is nothing more to wish for. I am king and you are nothing but my husband. Go tell the flounder I want to be emperor over all the lands, the wife ordered. The sea was black and boiled up from deep below. The fisherman trembled when he called to the flounder. What does she want now, the flounder asked. To be emperor, the fisherman called. Go. She is emperor, the flounder called back. The wife was emperor. Are you not satisfied now, the fisherman asked. No, the wife said. I am emperor now, but I want to be pope too. Go immediately and tell the flounder. The sea roared as it rose higher and higher. The fisherman was very afraid when he called to the flounder. What does she want now, the flounder asked. To be Pope, the fisherman answered. She is Pope, the flounder shouted. When the fisherman arrived home, he said, Wife, you're a Pope. Now let well enough alone. But as the sun rose in the morning sky, the wife said, I want to be God. Go tell the flounder at once. The fisherman was horrified. I cannot ask the flounder to do this, he begged. The wife fell into a rage, and so the fisherman left. The sea rose with waves as high as mountains when the fisherman called out. What does she want now, the flounder shouted. She wants to be God, the fisherman cried out. Go to her, the flounder called. 
When the fisherman arrived home, there was the old pigsty, and beside it was his wife. And that is where the fisherman and his wife lived from that day on. The end. All right, boys and girls, we're going to learn today by playing. We're going to do a flannel story. The flannel story is entitled Slippery Fish. Slippery fish, slippery fish, sliding through the water. Slippery fish, slippery fish, gup, gup, gup. Oh no, he's been eaten by an octopus. Octopus, octopus, squiggly in the water. Octopus, octopus, gup, gup, gup. Oh no, he's been eaten by a tuna fish. Tuna fish, tuna fish, flashing in the water. Tuna fish, tuna fish, gup, gup, gup. Oh no, he's been eaten by a great white shark. Great white shark, great white shark, lurking in the water. Great white shark, great white shark, gup, gup. Oh no, he's been eaten by a humongous whale. Humongous whale, humongous whale sprouting in the water. Humongous whale, humongous whale, glup, glup, glup. Oh no. I ate him. Awesome. Did you enjoy that story time, boys and girls? I sure did. I hope that you had fun learning today. Now it's time to say goodbye. But before we do, I want to tell you something. For more books by Rachel Isadora and the digital resources like eRead Kids and Hoopla, log on to the library's website at cvlga.org. See you next week. Now it's time to say goodbye. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye. And I'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye, boys and girls. 90% of brain growth happens before kindergarten, 90%. So talk, sing, read, write, and play with your child every day. Those five simple steps build the foundation for a lifetime of learning.